Hello and welcome to another segment of the Dr. Stem Show and podcast. When you hear the metaphor, life is like climbing a mountain, what comes to mind? Well, today we have an expert and I call him an expert because he actually has a whole book that is titled Life is Like Climbing a Mountain. I have with me today my good old friend, Dr. Bruce. Is it Bruce E. James? No. Yeah, James E. Bruce. James E. Bruce. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you stay away for a long time and then all of a sudden you come from the woodworks. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Bruce. How are you? How are you? It's been a pleasure. It's been a while. The uh, uh, your background is a stark contrast to what we received last night. We have some snow on the ground here in Boston. Oh, of course. And um, however, it's now all things are bad. Of all the snow that some of the other states got hit with, I uh, feet of snow. We got hit with about here in Brockton. We got hit with about uh, one inch. One inch. One inch oh, of, yeah, one inch of snow. And uh, so, uh, so I'm grateful. <laughs> Good. My hope is that when we when we are talking about life is like climbing a mountain, that they, on that mountain on the other side will always be on the sunny side where there's oceans and waters. And <laughs> I'm kidding. That is that is that is correct. No, and, really um, yes, so, yes, yes. Dr. Bruce, let's do this. Let's start off by you just telling the people about who you are, and you know, just so they can have a background information about yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Well, my name is Dr. James Bruce, and I'm a Bostonian, American-born, very excited, grew up in the city. I just I grew up around a loving and extended family. I was fortunate to grow around five generations, my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my parents, and my generation, and the one that followed. And uh, throughout the, uh, particularly uh, growing around the, the other like the great grandparents and the grandparents, uh, it was just it was a life and a family and a culture full of wisdom and full of godliness and full of just uh, principle and practical. And so that culture for me just presented for me just a different outlook on life. It is a whole different way of living, and it was separate uh, and from the worldly thinking or things that would often be presented in, in changing times of doom and gloom and so forth. And so the wisdom, with the wisdom, those principles of hope and faith and being able to uh, envision and seeing things that didn't uh, exist before the eyes, but seeing by faith. And so uh, with that also was um, courage and being brave and stepping out on faith and being strong and trusting and and believing and all these qualities <clears throat> that were sort of planted in me as a child. And so when I uh, when I was very young, I had this idea, this this value or this sense of uh, is like a personal asset to me was that there was nothing, nothing that was ahead of me that I couldn't achieve. There's nothing that was too far from me or too deep or too high. And I always believed in myself enough to say that whatever I wanted to, if I could believe, have the hope, have the faith, be willing to risk, take a risk. And if I didn't succeed, then I would be, uh, be able to justify it and sort of um, massage it with the idea that, hey, it wasn't my time. Or maybe it wasn't for me. So then that for me spoke to a lot of uh, otherwise reasons to be disappointed or be discouraged and, and so forth. And so I just see life as like climbing a mountain. I was able to see that as a metaphor to uh, what I wanted to do. And as growing up in the city and in the, in the hood, as they call it, uh, where there's a lot of temptation, there's a lot of uh, risk. Uh, around health issues, uh, safety issues, and so forth. And, and I was so directed as a, a, a young boy and such that um, growing up around other perhaps negative influences, I was daunted and teased and said, hey, let's go, you know, I'm very young age, maybe 12 years old. I said, hey, let's go smoke a cigarette and let's go do this. And, this. 
And the spirit came to me very young. He said, listen, if what you do today is not worth doing, oh, no, sorry. if what you do today won't benefit you tomorrow, yeah. is not worth doing now. I said, whoa, if what you do today won't benefit you tomorrow, it not, it's not worth doing now. And so that then, for me, that was the seal, seal on the, uh, on the idea or anything that was negative. I'm gonna say, wait a minute, if I smoke a cigarette, well, it's gonna benefit me tomorrow? No. If I read a book, will it help me tomorrow? Yes. If I, I have good manners and good self-respect for myself, will that benefit me tomorrow? Yes, it builds character, good character. And so as I went through life and began processing and understanding how life works and the challenges that people face in life, and I began looking at uh, comparing to the, uh, the physical versus the spiritual world mm -hmm. of things. And so in 2006, I was excited about, you know, still writing. I began writing, by the way, in 1984, when I began writing, uh, 1994, I'm sorry, 1994, when I began writing. And then um, I was hit with this notion that life is like climbing a mountain. And so I had a, a dear friend, uh, Chuck, who was an avid mountain at the climate, at mountain climber at the time. And at that point, Chuck had climbed maybe 500 mountains in the world. Mm -hmm. He would travel to places like he, he, uh, across the U.S. and uh, Ireland, different places in Africa to climb different mountains. And for that experience, I said, hey, Chuck, next time you go on a mountain climb, I want to climb a mountain with you. Let me know when you go. Because in my mind, I wanted to begin writing about that experience. I yeah. want the actual climb so I can say to somebody, yes, I know what it's like having to try to breathe at 2,000 feet up or whatever the case was. So lo and behold, we went on the mountain climb to Mount Manadna, which is in New Hampshire, it's white man. Climbed all the way to the top. And going through that, I, I interfaced with uh, edges or narrow paths, wide paths, uh, strange and weird sounds. It was in the afternoon, by the way. A different sounds and it um you looked around seeing like all the trees looked alike and so should i take my eyes off the path i might be lost and as it came down and it, uh and successfully went up and came back down and that for me began that uh, platform for me to begin writing so in 2006 when i climbed the mountain and i just took my time really processing it comparing to other journeys that people have in their life and then i just took my time writing and it's two years later I uh, completed that book, uh, detailing the, how to climb an actual mountain using the terms that I was introduced to, what's a con and a cliff and a hanger and those kinds of terms. And I was able to uh, understand them and compare them to real life situations and uh, conditions, circumstances. And I wrote the book, Life is Like Climbing a Mountain. And I, I, in the book, I compared that process using as a metaphor that let's say for example a cliff is something we'd say on the edge so sometimes you, you think you're almost there and you think you could see your way and you might be right on the edge you may fall to one may fall to their doom or that they have the gun or the strength to be willing to risk right go to the edge and you pull yourself back it's a not it's a bad risk so i i, I chose to do it and just as a, as a, um there's an exciting part to that. As a, I'm a singer songwriter. The writing, oh, we know that. And and, yeah, thanks. And so after um, I wrote the book, yeah. and immediately yeah. after the book was published, I was blessed with a song. My singing is a gift, and the song I I, I wrote the song, recorded it, and uh, and performed it, and is bearing the same title. Uh, Life is like climbing a mountain. Life is like climbing a mountain. There are peaks and hills and valleys. There's no hill too high to climb, no valley too low to find. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountain. Even before you set your journey, you must believe you can achieve. 
your dreams, your goals, and aspirations, that they will be within your reach. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. Your vision, your faith, and determination will be what keeps you on the path. So don't doubt, don't fret, and don't fear. Your destination, you must see yourself already there. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. Awesome, awesome. So I got a question for you. Sure. During this COVID-19 that we all went through, which was, you know, something that just took all of us, of course, you know, of whatever we were believing in, whatever we were doing, how did the book help you or is continuing to help you na navigate through the challenges of this climb, um, you know, through the COVID-19? Oh, for me, that was easy. But in the same time, I encourage other people. And again, if you listen to some of the, the elements, uh, key elements that I, I mentioned in the song, yeah. is that you have to have the, the vision, the faith, the determination, and that's what's going to keep them on the path. Yeah. And so the, the, the urging is that they don't doubt, they don't fret, don't be afraid, and don't fear because the destination, they must see themselves already there. So going through COVID and uh, disruption of the job, yeah. uh, needing to survive the yeah. fear factor of, you know, uh, 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 should I go out? Can I, you know, what is that? And people coughing and people that reacting is all that fear. You have that faith and determination is you have to see yourself already there, already coming through that with the job, coming through with the sickness and not feel doomed uh, about your, your, your condition at the time yeah. that you, you're going to lose. And I think, again, that's a big part of holding that. And I revert, revert back to what I said in the opening regarding what was instilled in me, mm -hmm. the sense of hope and risk and accepting the risk, accepting responsibility, the, uh, the vision and having the faith and determination that I'm going to succeed regardless of what's going on. I'm going to win. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to be very happy. And just a positive, a big part of surviving anything is the attitude, mm -hmm. is the attitude and disposition. I'm fortunate that, personally, I'm, I'm fortunate. I, I did take the, have the um, the booster shots and, then you know, the vaccines and stuff. And um, thank God I haven't had any of those. I, I haven't had COVID. Um, although some people have had anything and still got COVID, but I would spend like just this determination that I'm going to beat because it's all a spirit. It is all a spirit, spirit of sickness and so forth. It's a spirit. So you have that empowering with your mind and your heart, and your sense of who you are. You can beat it. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you know, thank you for that because I think what I found out as well is those people that had visions, goals, and dreams or aspirations were able to maneuver through that you know, period and are continuing to do so because then what happens is once we have that vision and determination and we set our goals, right? Many yes. of us, I, I know for myself, I can say that, I just know that I'll get there, but then how I'll get there, that's where the shaking comes in, right? So I'm not set in one way of getting there. I'm open to many pathways of getting exactly to where I'm going, which one of the things that I wanted to do so bad was always to work with people from around the world and do it either, you know, through video or telephone or Zoom. And here it came. It was just like silver platter. Here you go. You can now work with anybody and everybody that you want so it came and affected us in all different aspects and then the grief is you know something else because then 
for those of us that lost people during COVID, that grief of having the rug pulled and somebody, you know, loses their life all of a sudden, that was also something that I think we knew that, okay, we're going to lose people one, one way or the other, but not in hundreds and thousands the way that, you know, it happened. So that threw people off, you know, uh, with the grief and dealing with the grief. Yes. So what I like about your book is, again, it strengthens the hope, the faith, you know, and, and the knowing that all yes, is sir. well, right? That That is true. Now, what I talk about in the book, yeah. and in fact, I've had um, some publishers uh, find my book, discover mm -hmm. my book, and they're like, wow, this is so apropos right now where people are, uh, many people are suffering from mental illness. People are going through job changes, life changes, trying to rediscover themselves, so trying to reinvent them. People are being pushed out of the workforce because of technology and they just have to kind of really regroup and yeah. find out. So the question is like, some of the profound questions I think I presented in the book is like, look at the mountain. And, and the mountain could, itself could be a metaphor. A lot of the mountains could be, uh, considered a, a goal. Yeah. A mountain could be considered a challenge. Yeah. A mountain can be considered a struggle. Mm -hmm. A mountain could be uh, considered a problem. Yeah. So what is your mountain? What is your goal? What is your problem? And then I, I was saying to somebody the other day as I was, as I was thinking about the book, and I said, if you stand at any uh, terrain, any point in place, and you, as far as the eye can see, yeah. you might see a mountain, especially some mountainous places, you see a mountain, yeah. but guess what? On the other side of the mountain, there are people. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, it then becomes a, a question like, hmm, do people surround mountains or do mountains surround people? Ooh. So if you look at that, and again, take the word mountain as a metaphor, as a problem. Mm -hmm. Do people surround themselves around problems or do problems attach themselves to people or surround people? And so I think it's important to understand that. And so people say, I have a problem. Hmm, do you have a problem or does the problem have you? <laughs> it's like, wow. That's true. That's deep. But then, yeah. I mean, problems, you know, affect all of us, right? And Absolutely. And, and we could say, you know, mountains affect all of us. We all face a, a challenging, you know, um, something in our lives at one point or, or another. Yes. So I think we're always going to be attached to problems or problems are going to attach us as well. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is uh, to understand, it's really about understanding. You, you, you touched on that point. It's about really understanding. Yeah. And sometimes what we see as a problem is a symptom or as a result yeah. or as an end, uh, end to something that it's really not a problem. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. we make things our problem. So the question is, understand what's before you. Is that a problem? Oh, no problem. I can do this. So I, and one has to see themselves bigger than the problem. I think if people see themselves less than subservient so to the problem, then they're done already. Yeah. <laughs> they're you're done right. already. You're right. They're done. One of the so things, you say Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say one of the things that really helps me is understanding also that there is no problem that you're going to face that nobody else has ever faced. There you go. There you go. Um, unless people uh, sort of grab that problem and hold on to that problem and exclude others from that problem mm -hmm. who can provide the solution. Yeah. And how? This is my problem. What's your problem? Uh, no, I'll handle it. But if, let's talk about it. I can just tell you, it's done. No problem. Here's a hundred dollar. The bill is paid, yeah. <laughs> or something right. like that. Whatever it is, <laughs> whatever the case is, and the problem is solved. Right. So the, the book in the book, uh, I provide. It's a uh, in chapter eleven. Uh, I provide it's like a roadmap, uh, understanding what the mountain. So ask the first question: What is your mountain? Mm -hmm. What is you want to do? And then the, the the idea is you keep digging deeper, deeper, deeper as climbing the mountain. You keep climbing higher and higher and higher. In this case, you keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper, understanding what is it you want? Why do you want to buy that house? Well, the house is really cheap price. But I, I want you to consider investigating why is that house so uh, low price? 
And you may discover that, look, three people just got murdered in that house. Ooh. Or you may discover that houses in two years is coming down for a highway and, and whatever. Or I have to have that guy. Oh, he's just a love of mine. He's a sparkle in my eye. Why is it that guy? Is that the only guy in town? Mm -hmm. So you begin to understand. Because if one doesn't investigate, I keep on and, and be very clear in understanding what your um, mountain is. And understand that the mountain should be for you, the mountain climb. It should be your goal, your dream, your aspiration. Mm -hmm. And I often say to people, as a as just like an idea, as a thought. I so said, don't let your dream become someone else's nightmare. Mm. And don't let someone else's nightmare. dream become your nightmare. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. deep. That's deep. Yeah. So you have to find out what is it, what is it about that car, that house, that person, that job that I really, really, really want. Because a lot of things, it's built in situations are temporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are just temporary. When that, when I have to have this car, this car smells so good. Yeah, but when that scent goes away, you have a car, a car that won't start. So, so what, are you, what are you saying? Don't settle for, for, for second best? Don't buy secondhand cars or houses that are 30 years old? No, I'm not saying that. No, here's what I'm saying. If that is your goal to buy a 30 year old car, yeah. make sure it's just make sure it's what you want because then you'll feel connected. You'll develop a relationship with it. You'll feel passionate about it. You'll make the best of it. Yeah. And so um, as that's part of the thing. So again, in the chapter, I show there's like a roadmap, show how to navigate through struggles, through trials, through challenges. And by breaking down each aspect of the who, what, when, where, how, and why. And once someone becomes very, very clear, then they can make that conscious decision about accepting that job or accepting that person or literally climbing that mountain. And you have to consider all the factors that make up you getting to that. Well, I want to climb a mountain, but I have asthma. Well, that might not be good. Or I want to buy this house, but I don't have a job. Or well, my credit is not that great. So then you have to work on each of those aspects to reach that goal. But you have to see yourself there if you really want it. Now, as a teacher, I, I can recall teaching in a public school in Boston. And just, I like to challenge uh, my learners. And I, I, I would just ask them just randomly, hey, what do you see us? What do you want to do when you get older? And this could be fourth, fifth, sixth graders. And I said, what do you want to do? Well, maybe I want to be a doctor. And then maybe I'll play basketball. Maybe. And so for me, that says, you're really not sure. So anything can work for you. <laughs> anything can work for you. And then I had some other kids and I could kind of like tell what the, 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 the culture within their home, because a lot yeah. of spots from home, I can tell from their culture. And I can say, hey, what do you want to be when you get it? And some of the kids from a different culture would say, I'm going to be a scientist. And he said, wow, I'm going to be a doctor. And so that makes a big difference. Like, yeah. So as I setting themselves, being determined, the faith and determination uh, that I'm going to be, I'm going to do what it takes to get there. And I'm going to uh, become or transform sacrifice and do what I want to do because this is something I want to do. And it might be just for a temporary thing. I just want to buy a car, I want to buy a Lamborghini so I can say, yeah, you did it. It almost reminds me of and understand why you want to do it. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of back in 2003 when I set a new path to, I wanted to pursue my PhD because I had already had my MBA. I had my bachelor's degree law school. But I said, I wanted to, after running a business almost 25 years, and I said, hmm, I want to go, I want to climb higher. Yeah. I want to pursue a PhD. Mm -hmm. And it's not to make money. It's not to show off. It's just so I can say to me, James, I knew you can do it because you're so much. And I want to do it in the midst of balancing so many other balls, raising a family, running a business, mm -hmm. singing in a singing group, being involved in the community, I mean, taking care of my health, everything. I want to yeah. be able to. And six years later, I achieved that. 
And just so I can go to that mayor and say, see, I knew you can do it. And that's fine. And people insisted, I have to call you doctor. No, no, just call me Jay, so I'm good. No, but then, but then he, here's the thing. I'm glad that you gave an example of how you've actually practiced some of the principles in your book, right? Yes, yes. That example that, that you gave, raising yes. children, that means you have children at that time, a spouse at that time. Those are the challenges, the mountains that people really are dealing with. So now that decision, would you agree with me that it's not just about James looking in the mirror and saying, I got to go to school. It's also about the children and the spouse. Absolutely. I mean, how are they going to deal with it? How are they receptive to it? How did you maneuver that? Absolutely. And, and in fact, what I did is I um, involved them in, in some, as involved them in that process. Okay. I included them in that learning process. And for my my three uh, children at the time, they're now young adults, but my three children at the time, yeah. and I did it with a purpose and, and intentionally. My intention was, as they were approaching high school, I wanted to show them that life is what you make it. Yes. You can balance that. So see, daddy's doing this. Daddy's helping to raise you guys. Daddy's going to church, his services. Daddy, daddy's singing with his singing group. Yeah. Daddy's involved in different committees in the community. Daddy is running his business. Daddy is taking care of his health. Daddy is exercising. Daddy's eating right. And you can balance all of this and achieve those things that people say, that's out of the question. I could never <laughs> study that, that much. Yeah. I could never and do all this. And just to show that everything is possible. Yeah. That was my mind. I was consistent. I, was, I remained <clears throat> to be me, the kind of person I am. I didn't throw my problem, my challenges, my issues, my stresses, I didn't put them on anybody. I think I took responsibility for that. Yes. And so part of that intention was to be able to do this, having them in the foreground, next ground, you know, with me, so they can see that that is a possibility. Possibility. And a possibility that you could, as, a, as an unspoken, but spoken message, that in light of all the violence, so there's no excuse why you say you can't go to high school and work a job. There's no excuse. There's no excuse why you say you can't, you know, you can't study and, and, and play sports. It, 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 so everything is possible. It's about a mindset. Remember, is uh, they have to have the dream. What is your dream? What is it you want to do? And figure it out, bottom line. Just set your goal. Think the goal. Here is the process. Think it. Discuss it or talk about it. Write it down. And create an action plan and follow the steps. And granted, some things will have to change or yeah. will just by default will change, but yeah. stay true to your 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 path. And it's okay if you don't want to climb the literal mountain all the way to the top. Yes. If that's what you want. You say, I don't want to, I want to play basketball. My goal is to be on, on, on the Celtics team. I'm saying this in Boston, but my goal is to be on a basketball team. I don't need to be the MVP. I don't need to be the starting five. I just want to be on the team. And if that's what they're comfortable with, they're going to give it their hundred. Yeah. 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 I like that part because then many a time when we're talking about climbing a mountain, everybody is always thinking about the top and, and reaching way at the top of the mountain. And sometimes the top of the mountain is measured by just how much you have climbed and you can get to a certain spot and rest or end there because that's where your mountain ends. So not everyone is, is supposed to be a PhD or, you know, I mean, a business person or a married person or, a, you know, I mean, whatever it that's, is in life. So I think I like that, that you say that so that everyone is not striving for the impossible possible or if they don't get to reach a certain point in their life they think that they are a failure because many a time we think we are failing but no we are actually learning some lesson and at some point or another as long as we are on this side of the grave we can always pick it up and climb again absolutely and i, I like that because not only are we when we go through this process of climbing the mountain, we're not only learning lessons guess what we are also teaching lessons Yes. And so while I was learning a lesson, teaching myself, I was learning a lesson of, of that journey, PhD, and was also teaching myself and also teaching my children. And those who are looking on, um, that, that it, it's a possibility on, on that. Awesome. So is this book um, applicable to both young and old, or there's a certain age limit that can understand it? Absolutely. Anyone who can dream. 
<laughs> I like that. Anybody, anyone who can dream. Look I at like this for that. Because <laughs> if anyone who can dream or articulate what they desire, their goals, I and mean, even little children, as they said, I'm a, a teacher. They says, no, I, 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 and they even little children, they have this aspiration uh, about winning. Yeah. They have the aspiration about want to be first. I want to be first in line. I'm going to finish my lunch first or whatever the case. And they have that the idea of like winning or achieving yeah. and setting their goals. I'm going to finish my homework first. I'm going to whatever. And, yeah. uh, and, and that's right. But again, whatever the goal is, that should be appropriate for that person. As long as they're engaged in doing something and feeling encouraged, feeling accomplished yes. and whatever level. Uh, that they feel that. So the book is designed to be engaging, informative. And there's another aspect of uh, the book. And yeah. it really, actually, all these years, all these years, late, these years later, it's about 30, 30, 30 plus years yeah. since I wrote the book. And it was not until about a month ago when I had a, a visit from a, a minister, the pastor. And we started talking about the book and... Uh, and it is like hit me, boom, in terms of the mountains. And in the book, I talk about the essence of the mountains. Because in, in, if those who believe in the Bible and in, in stories of history, uh, biblically, uh, it, the personalities that God worked with in major ways had a mountain experience. Yeah. You had Moses, you had Jesus, you had Job, different ones on a mount, having a mountain relationship. And then in our time, People who have made profound contributions, some people, profound contribution to humanity had mountain-related experience. You had Mahatma Gandhi, you had Martin Luther King Jr., who referenced the mountain. And even in our, our foreparents or grandparents, it says, girl, I, I've been to the mountain, I'm tired, I've been to the mountaintop, and I've seen it, and they can yeah. see it. And so it's just another word, I've risen to the level where I can see. Yes. I've risen to the level where I can know. No, yeah. Risen to the level where I can believe without doubt. Yes. I've risen to the level where my faith is not wavering. Yes. But I so in that in that in that sense, the, the spiritual. Yes. Then because I, I know the scripture, and I said, wow. The point of the book is mentioned in the book. When I in the song there, you have to see yourself already there. Yeah. That goes into Hebrews, which talks right. about faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. And so, again, I'm referencing that mountain. Even the scripture talks about if you have the the, the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you, you could tell the yeah. mountain be thou removed. So all of these, I said, wow, I didn't realize <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the wisdom, yes. the, the uh, inform. Mm -hmm. That was included in the book already uh, since 2008. Oh, wow. And just but have such a major, major um, application in today's world. And we're looking, uh, you know, with a lot of bureaucracies, you mentioned earlier about the systemic, you know, there's different systems. Mm -hmm. And a mm -hmm. lot of systems are designed. This mm -hmm. is my personal piece. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of system design are. On paper, they look like, great. This is gonna be. This yeah. is gonna change the world. Mm -hmm. But in application, there are some stop gaps. And there are some hurdles and loops and hoops and yeah. bumps that's, that's designed not to make it work. Yeah. And so, um, I'm saying that to say that the uh, a lot within our system, there's a lot of these hurdles and things you uh, these these mountains and hills and more mountains we have to climb. Yeah. And sometimes people say, well, this application for this grant or this application for this housing or this house to buy this house, this thing is 40 pages long. Forget it. So that's it's like a system. Yeah. It's designed yeah. Yeah. to weed people out and to create it. But for some reason, no, I don't care if it takes 100 pages. I'm going to do this. Oh, I see. And, and those are the ones who survive. Those one has the determination. Those are the ones that have the faith. Those are the ones can see themselves bigger than that application. Yeah. Bigger than that process. Bigger than that orientation. Bigger than that boot camp, or whatever they go through. 
to, to reach that. Duh, so that's, duh. Yeah. You said to me when we started, you were like, well, set your clock because we're going to be talking forever. You weren't even looking. <laughs> I, I, I get, I, I'm, I'm filled. I'm filled up because you were not <laughs> lying. So yes. as I'm about to stop the show, here you go. You're coming up with more nuggets and more nuggets. Well, well, well. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But this is, I, I get really passionate about because yes. uh, it, it's really important. Uh, because we all can have mountains, mountains in our lives. Yes. And this is depending on how you see it as a mountain yeah. or as a ride. Yeah. As a, a mountain or as a horseback, mm -hmm. as a hump, as a camel. I can you tell know. the passion and I can hear the passion and I know that our audience can hear the passion in this. So, you know what? I wish I had all the time in the world. As I mentioned before we even started the show, I make them nice, short and sweet. One, so people can invite you back and you can come back and we can talk again. But mostly for today, I want everyone to hold the book, Life is Like Climbing a Mountain. The way that you heard Dr. Bruce explaining some of the themes in there, his life stories and how he was inspired to write this book is the same way that the book reads, nice and easy to follow. So where can get they get the copy of your book? I have a um, uh, website is jamesbrucebooks.com. It's also available in a major outlet like Amazon. Walmart, Target, Barnes and Nobles, and a lot of major bookstores. Just um, call up the title, Life is Like Climbing a Mountain. It is by Dr. James E. Bruce, Sr. Awesome. So as we end the session, I know what I want to ask you so that, you know, we can literally end the session. What is your one word for 2024? Achieve. I got achieve. you. He never gets tongue tied, you know, like. Not, mm. not at all. Achieve. 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 Yes. I that, like that. Yeah. I like that word. I like that word. Doc, let's do this again. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you, listening audience, viewing audience, and uh, continue to view this great show. Awesome. Awesome. Good connecting with you again. Let's stay in touch. Don't be a stranger. And to all of you that have joined up on this show, if you want to be a guest on the Dr. Stem Show and podcast, please email us at drstemshow at gmail.com or you can send a message right where you see this show. Thank you again for watching the show. And as I always say, be encouraged. Be encouraged. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Life is like climbing a mountain There are peaks and hills and valleys There's no hill too high to climb no valley too low to find If you believe You will achieve Your life's mountains Even before you set your journey You must believe you can achieve Your dreams, your goals and aspirations that they will be within your reach. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. Your vision, your faith, and determination will be what keeps you on the path. So don't doubt, don't fret, and don't fear. Your destination, you must see yourself already there. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. Even before you set your journey, you must believe you can achieve 
your dreams, your goals, and aspirations, that they will be within your reach. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountain. Life is like climbing a mountain. There are peaks and hills and valleys. There's no hill too high to climb, no valley too low to find. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. Even before you set your journey, you must believe you can achieve your dreams, your goals, and aspirations, that they will be within your reach. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. If you believe, you will achieve your life's mountains. If you believe, you will achieve your